it turns out that some people actually really liked my video that I uploaded yesterday on Facebook. And, well, since I'll be uploading that same video on YouTube later on, I thought, you know what, I might as well make a certain video I had on pause for quite some time now. I was thinking of actually doing the Overwatch stereotype video. Uh, you know, if you actually ever watched Soundsmith and you were seeing his TF2 stereotype videos for weapons, hats, and god knows what else, uh, you know what, I'm thinking of doing it a little bit differently, so I'm going to be doing it with every single Overwatch character, and maybe I'll do it with some alternate attacks, and maybe I'll do a stereotype for ultimates, and this maybe sometime down the road. Just, uh, let me, uh, let me know what you think. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. Oh, I should probably also mention, stereotypes don't apply to everyone, they are only existent for what I've actually seen so far during my entire time playing Overwatch. So if this does actually apply to you, then guess what? You are pretty much part of the entire community of the lovely world of Overwatch. But if you're not, then, well, congratulations, you're a special snowflake. Anyway, sorry for the interruption, let's go. Uh, well, I don't really know how to start with this, besides the fact that I cannot play this character whatsoever. You know, just, I just personally cannot. The main reason is because I can eat, I just mostly die faster than I can pull any attack on them. But for the other people that normally play this match, it's, uh, it's a little bit different to explain. In most cases, most people would actually just spam their attacks over and over again and hope they actually get a hit, while others actually use combos that are so threatening to any character in the entire game, you would always wonder if, you know, you should probably try playing Doomfist in the first place, and then you actually decide you should, and then you fail later. But if, in most cases, if you ever see a Doomfist main, just keep an eye out, because you know, I can guarantee you he'll punch you in the back into a wall and immediately kill you. I got something to tell ya! I need healing. But in all seriousness though, Genji can be extremely annoying. And for someone I don't even main generally, it can be a bit hard to actually play as this character in my in my mind. But for other people who main this giant waifu target, well, it's a little bit understandable why. I mean he's got awesome ability, he can deflect shit, but he also seems to have a massive habit of jumping around. I'm not joking, if you go into one of the games I play and there's a Genji Mang on the other team, I can guarantee you he will mash the jump button into oblivion. Makes me wonder if he actually has to afford another controller every game. Well look, I don't really know, but the main problem is that they just really love to fuck you over. And a really good Genji can easily get his ultimate in about 5 seconds after the match starts. I don't know how they do it, but they do. Am I high? Am I dead? Yeah, I'm gonna flash you man! Yeah, 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 I'm gonna roll out man! I can shoot that man! Oh, I got you! Oh, I'm so good at this game! Oh, I'm gonna fan you! Oh, I'm gonna flash you! Yeah, 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 yeah. It's that roll! Oh, you didn't hook me! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, baby! I'm so good! Yeah, yeah. I punch you in the face! <laughs> oh, I'm so good at this game! <laughs> I got all the medals. I'm so good this game. Guys, you should respect me. I got all the medals. <laughs> okay, I got 
check my shit in place. Uh, yep. Okay, I got my shit. Let's roll. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost got there. Yeah, 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 just, yeah, I've got this, guys. Don't worry. I'm the, I'm the bird. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we are. All right, just gonna shoot myself up and just. Uh, whoops. It's okay, guys. I'll just attack you from here. I'll just. Uh, I got it. Uh, I got it. Uh, uh, there we are. All right, I'll just attack from here because I'm normal. I'll just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no one can get me from up here. <laughs> Reapers are a strange breed of creatures. They seem to be really good at what they're doing. Missing and aiming for the head, and nothing else. Oh, shit, 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 shit. But, in most cases though, when you are up against a Reaper main, they seem to teleport in the most random places. And, like I said before, they seem to love aiming for the head, no matter what. I can guarantee you one little thing. They will always get you in the head. Even if they're aiming for your body, that one bullet will hit you in the head and it will do more damage than intended. No matter how hard you try, you will always get shot in the head. But, however, there's the shit reapers I should probably mention. They teleport in the most dumbest locations. They will even teleport right next to you and think they'll still get you. But in reality, you'll probably just be sitting there jerking off, waiting for them to actually teleport to your location, then completely destroy them. Oh, and I know I've been doing a few jokes for the other characters and probably being a complete dick in the process, but just one more, and I can assure you I'll be done. Okay, that, that was horrible. Let me let me try that again. Let me just uh, let me just uh, restart the clip, and then I'll try that again. Okay, I've got everything set up. I've got the joke ready. Here we go. Soldier 76 mains are kind of mixed. Some of them always have a helix rocket on them, some of them have probably some of the best aiming I've ever seen, and some of them are just really good at dodging everything, despite the fact they are a much more bigger target than Baby Diva. But, you know, I really don't- oh shit. You know, I really don't understand how people don't play Soldier 76 more often, especially considering the, some of the people I've met on Quick Play and sometimes competitions, and I'm talking about 12 year olds who play Call of Duty, and when I say Call of Duty, I'm not saying, oh, I don't like Call of Duty, so I might as well make that as an excuse. I like Call of Duty, but I don't play Soldier 76 because I play Call of Duty. That's probably why most kids actually play as Soldier 76, but I digress. But there's the really, really good ones. The ones that always have their ultimate on ready. The ones that always get to play the game. The ones that heal everyone. The one who you can easily count on more than probably some Mercy who only just started playing the game and thought that a hot, well, as, as I've been told, Swedish wave boot would probably come down. But yeah, I would always be careful with these Soldier 70, 76 mains. I've only seen a few good ones in my day, but, that, you, you know, there's always a good time you'll probably be surprised by how good some new people can be. I really don't have much to say about Soldier 76 except for the people who complain about his aimbot. Then again, I would probably complain about aimbot if it came from a third party program and not the actual game mechanic. Oh boy! One of the most recent mains in the competition meta that I have seen that are actually dangerous. Sombra mains are probably one of the most leechiest characters in Overwatch so far. I probably call on a certain other support character, but she's not as much as a leech as Sombra herself, being the fact that she probably has a lot of strategies she can pull on the entire team 
from disabling barriers, disabling shields, and even removing any character that has shield quality, such as Zenyatta, or even, well, dare I say it, her. But, in most other cases, a good Sombra main will always have a back door open. And even when they don't, they will still always find a med kit that you will never be able to touch. And, worst of all, they will always hack you every now and then. And when I say every now and then, I mean every three seconds. Now, that's probably an over-exaggeration, but when was the last time you met a Sombra main who didn't give you hot shit? And I'm talking about the other team, despite the fact they never have actually been able to talk to you on the actual team, but I digress. And they can be more stealthy than any other character, despite the fact of her being exceptionally loud. And I'm not talking about Reinhardt level loud, I'm talking about just plain old level Bastion loud. But, yeah, like I said before, if you ever see a really good Sombra on the other team, Focus fire on her ASAP, because she will completely ruin your defenses if you do not give enough attention to her. Oh, and by the way, even though I don't main her, I still give full respect to all Sombra mains. Imagine that you're playing as Scout in Team Fortress 2. Now give him teleporting abilities and also the ability to regenerate anything that he has lost turn him into a female, and then you've got Tracer. A lot of people have been playing Tracer in the recent times, ever since the actual competitive season as of now, from being as number 11. But a lot of these actual Tracer mains are extremely tedious, extremely annoying, and they know exactly what they're doing. And I would be surprised if they didn't, because there is no Tracer main I have ever met at this point who hasn't completely obliterated or annoyed the other team to the point where she gets to play the game or just completely destroys the entire team's health. Now, I would also say that her ultimate is a little bit of a problem, despite the fact, yes, she has had a buff. Well, actually, no, wait, she had a nerf. That's right, she just got a nerf from 400 to 300 but with her ultimate. But her ultimate can build up way too fast, way too tediously annoying to the point where she can just spam the bomb every now and then. If you've already been watching the ultimate bar on my game right now, you can easily tell how quickly this abomination of a weapon grows and grows and grows until you can just sneak up on someone and chuck a bomb at them. I know that wasn't the best example, but I'm pretty sure you get the point. Fast, annoying, and don't even get me started with the ultimate power that this little British person has. Now, there isn't that many good ones, even though I've seen a lot, but there is a lot of fair tracer mains that could end up on your team who thinks they're complete hot shit. And in most cases, it's fun to annoy the living hell out of them. But at the same time, you do kind of need someone to take all the bullets while you're capturing the point. Now, I'm just going to explain that what I'm going to say now will probably relate to the video I've already done before explaining Bastion's overwhelming power. Being a massive sentry gun, he's essentially the Torbian that we probably already had. What I mean is, is that Torbian has a turret, right? That turret shoots bullets. But it's pretty much weak, it's pretty much like the uh, Symmetra turrets, just slightly worse. But then when you've got Bastion, who is already a set turret, he can pretty much obliterate the entire team. And this would probably explain why the Overwatch community asked for the actual people to, you know, only have one person playing as one hero and no more than two actual bastions. I can respect that, but I can also safely say that those who bitch about Bastion being too overpowered, well, dude, seriously, I mean, Heavy from Team Fortress 2 has a minigun, and it doesn't exactly tickle, hell, even it pretty much just obliterates anyone at close range, or even at medium range. Now pretend this is a heavy minigun. There you go. Oh, he's getting his health shredded. It's like I'm using a minigun or something. Just shredding his health away. Sapping the life out of him. Exchanging his life for salt over and over again. 
but the Bastion mains make this possible. They put themselves in the dumbest of places, but it works so well that it just obliterates everyone. If I were you, I would probably check for Bastion mains in every available spot. You never know if a Bastion's going to be in a place he's not supposed to be. And I can guarantee you, the moment he pulls out his ultimate, he will target the weakest person in the game. And in most cases, I'm looking at you, Tracer Mains. I'm going to pray for you and hope to Christ that this never happens to you. Then again, I'm also a very good liar, so you're just going to have to figure that out for yourself. So, what haven't I already said about the Hanzo in my previous video? Well, I could probably say a bit more. I've already ex explained that his Scatter Arrow ability has been changed to a... Wait for it. Another Scatter Arrow ability. So, I really... Oh, God, I can't aim for him with shit. But, I can easily just say one thing. Hanzo mains have gotten better because of this new ability. And even when they're not using it, they can still manage to headshot you close range while you're falling through the air. I don't know why though, it's a little bit of a mystery to me. But I can definitely safely say, if you see a Hunter May on the other team, stay away from him as far as possible. He's probably suckier at further range, but he can definitely headshot you in a single shot in, in just mid or short range. That's all I have to say, carry on. Ah uh, yes, I get to talk about my favorite junkie boy. Junkrat is pretty much hated, and I still cannot see why. I mean, the recent comments I've seen in my video, and also on the, just the recent actual talking about that post I made a couple of days back, it's a little bit rare for people to just complain this much about the one character. I don't know why though. I mean, I'm probably sure you do. Even though it's probably said again and again and again and again. But, then again... I, well, I don't know, I'm kind of speechless about this, guys. I've already said everything that needed to be said in the other video. I just wish I could say more. Everyone bitches about Junkrat and nothing's going to change. I mean, he's already been nerfed, and I gotta say, it's a little bit difficult for me as a Junkrat main to make those shots. And I'm... Well, maybe except for that one. I'm sorry, guys. But John Kratz going to be staying for a long time to come. Nah, I ain't done yet. John Kratz needs to be well respected. He does a shit ton of damage for someone who shoots a balls out of his gun. I mean, no one other character does that. None comes to mind. But you really gotta give credit to the dude who's probably the only reason why you haven't actually lost the game yet. He's trying his hardest to make those shots. He's trying his hardest to prevent you from dying. He's trying his hardest to actually make sure that you get out safely. But I guess if you're going to bitch about one character while everyone else is probably jerking off at spawn, then... Well, I really don't know what's wrong with you, dude. I mean, I've already established that, he, that Junkrat is not the worst character in the game. He doesn't give out the most punishment when actually required. No, that's already been well addressed. So, I don't know what's wrong with you guys. But, I think Junkrat is just fine. Oh, by the way, there is actually a few Junkrat mains who's actually better than me. I'm probably just one of the top 10 best Junkrat mains in the game. Not that I want to brag. But I probably would. Main mains are pretty rare, honestly. I don't know about you, but I've barely seen any actual main mains in this... I say that five times fast. I've never actually seen any May mains in the actual game as far as competitive goes. In quick play is no exception. I haven't really seen any actual May mains play just exceptionally well. I mean, sure, there's pretty bad ones, but I've never seen that many good ones either, so your opinion should be put in the comments below. I'm gonna build my sentry, build it on the point. I'm gonna build my sentry, it will shoot you straight on side. I'm gonna build a sentry, 
I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna build a sentry, then I'm gonna join and die in the fight. I'm gonna splooge my armor and only use it for me. Because I'm greedy, just can't you see? Then I'm going to splooge with my ultimate. I'm gonna fire faster than you can type in the comments. Okay, well, maybe after that extremely shitty song and my extremely shitty singing, I should probably get to the point of the good old-fashioned angry midget. I really don't see the whole point of having two characters having, you know, turrets. I mean, sure, we need this midget in the story. He's part of the uprising events. But he's pretty much the weaker version of Bastion, just with a little bit extra more guns to use. And sure, he can probably pack out a punch every now and then, but he's only there to distract the team, as far as I'm completely concerned. Oh, by the way, he can be easily countered by Junkrat with a single grenade shot and a concussion mine, guaranteed. Unless he's use unless if he's using an ultimate, then I really cannot help you there. But I would really like to see um, you know, I would just like to see this guy have a buff. Maybe give him a little bit more power in his turret, and maybe, I don't know, just change him up a little bit. Because, as far as I'm completely concerned, his turret is more easily killable than the actual Torbian himself. And I've tested that theory. Torbians are harder to kill than turrets. Enough said. And, and as for the mains, like I said before, they're mediocre. Oh, by the way, they are so incredibly cocky, they like to talk about their medals every few seconds. Just to prove that they are incredibly good at the game, and everyone else is inferior. Widowmakers are controversial, to say the least. But, I can definitely say that a Widowmaker main are probably one of the most dangerous characters in the game. You know, when they actually prove that they're actually really good, and they don't just say that, and then they pretty much are literally shit, like I am right here. I mean, I guess I'm sort of average, to say the least. I've only played her in competitive once, got three headshots, and then died every other time. But when you get a Widowmaker main on the other team, she will completely obliterate your team, one by one. Unless it's me playing as Junkrat, then she pretty much dies faster than her Venom Mine Concussion. I actually really respect Eva mains. They know exactly how to put up a good fight. And, but for some reason, uh, just like Bugs and the Bug Zapper, they are really attracted to Torbian turrets. I really do not know why, but I find it quite funny that the turret dies, but then the mech explodes. But I can also really see that people bitch about people, you know, Oh, Diva doesn't give out much damage from a distance, and oh, yeah, and you can only do so much damage from up close. Yeah, well, that's great. Just remember that Diva's bullets, plus rockets, had to have a massive change. Definitely the rockets, though, because remember they had to have a damage reduction because of how dangerous they were in competitive? Yeah, me too. They're also pretty dangerous by default. I'm going to be extremely honest with you. I've never actually seen anyone who mains Orissa. She just kind of gets picked just because no one else wants to play as her. I can play as her sometimes, but I'm more of a, I'm going to join you as a Bastion combo and then completely shred everyone as two people are shooting at the same person. But she's also pretty good doing 1v1s, I'm not going to lie. She is very interesting to play as 1v1s. But as for people who play with her exceptionally well, you might as well stay with her at all times. Because she will constantly give you a shield no matter what. I should probably also say that she is perfect the way she is. If anyone actually hates Orissa because of, I don't know, she looks like a horse or just something incredibly stupid, then you should probably just best to ignore them and just keep on playing the games of Orissa and play as your game's content. There aren't any really bad ones, except for those people who don't know where to put the shield, and they just put it down because they really don't know how it works. Reinhardt mains are... mediocre. They'll charge into random shit, and even if they try to charge into you, you can just easily sidestep into the void, the poor buggers. Ooh, I'm powered up! Well, I guess I better start swinging my hammer and hope I don't die! Yay! I'll just keep swinging- Oh, it's over now. Oh, well. 
<laughs> in all seriousness though, you would always have to make sure that if there's an enemy Reinhardt on the other team, just just go for him. Especially as a junk rat, because they don't know how to turn around. And even when they do, they just don't seem to do it very well. Mostly because maybe their sensitivity is low, I, I, I don't know. But, I don't know about you guys, but Reinhardt mains aren't exactly the smartest mains in the entire game. I mean, I guess you could prove me wrong, but you would have to be in the other team to actually prove me otherwise. Sorry. Roadhog mains are probably the most fun to play with, but to play against, that's a whole other story. There you have the, probably the best hook accuracy in the entire game, but at the same time, they probably have the worst aiming accuracy with their primary fire. The same goes for their secondary fire that shoots a Dragon Ball-like item in towards your face, if they could actually hit it to begin with. But I can also just safely say that Roadhogs can be exceptionally dangerous on maps that involve bombless pits, side glances, and definitely anything that involves hooking you and putting you down into an instant death. I should probably also say that if you are not careful with any other Roadhog, they will just immediately heal themselves. And I'm not gonna lie, there have been a few cases of me playing with Roadhog and having gold healing more than the actual Mercy in my other team. So, I don't know, if you guys are an actual Roadhog main, then I respect you very well. If you're not, and you actually like to eat bacon, just don't do it near him. Seriously. Don't worry guys, I got this! I've got this! I'm a tank! I know what I'm doing! I'll meet you guys at the other side! I'm gonna get you guys! I'm gonna kill all of you! I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna- Oh wait, I'm gonna get- Yeah, there we are! Yes, I'm gonna kill you all! Join me! In the pit of death, I'm gonna kill all of you! Ah, oh, I'm gonna zap you! Oh, come on now, I'm gonna zap you! Ah, oh, you're gonna sleep, you victim! Oh, I'm gonna kill you! 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 Yeah! Oh, I'm gonna kill you! Yeah! Come on! I'll get you! I'll get you! Oh, I'm gonna get yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, I'm oh, gonna get ya. Right, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, I'm going crazy. Oh, because I'm going ultimate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get you. Yeah. Oh, shit. Sorry, Mangs are. Now I can actually use the bubbles and prove my point even further. Sorry, Mangs are actually quite hard to kill. And I am not gonna lie, it is extremely satisfying to kill them. Yes, even more than Sombra. Even though you would probably have to play as Sombra to get any kind of impact on this character. But with that being said though, you would have to be extremely careful when you're shooting her and her teammates. Because she will shoot bubbles faster out even though the cooldown wouldn't allow it. Well actually, now that I think about it, how does she actually get more bubbles out? I mean, there's no actual ability to make your cooldowns go down faster, but... And again, I really don't see how they do it. It's a bit controversial, I guess. I, I can't really complain about it, but then again, I also don't like playing against them. I, I, I mean, they're just so good. They're probably one of the hardest characters to master in the entire game. Yeah, I, I don't know, guys. I'm, I'm kind of completely stumped. They're just, I don't know, it's just so hard to explain this character. It's just so hard to play. It's so hard to kill. Only the best players just normally plays this character and do so well. Just let me know in the comments below. I really don't know how to explain this character. She's just... She's not overpowered, but she's definitely not easy to kill either. It's troublesome. I just don't understand it. Please help me. I'm gonna be brutally honest with you. I have never seen an anime in my life. But, however, that doesn't stop me from actually explaining what I see in most actual players of the Ana. Ever since that buff of her being able to heal multiple targets with a single shot makes her more of an, accept more of an acceptable character to play as in most circumstances. Hell, dare I even say, a pretty good character to the main. I wouldn't actually do it as much since this also takes a little bit of skill and since most of my actual teammates I've played with in competitive 
move a lot more like Genji, I really don't think this would be the case for me. However, that is not safely to say that healing other characters in your team just by shooting once and the increased clip size, I really can't find a way to hate Ana more than anyone else probably might. All I could just say is, if you're a really good Ana and you know exactly what you're doing, I respect you, straight up. Just don't nano boost me, okay? I I am not going to be responsible if you nano boost me. No matter what character I play as. Are we cool? Alright, just had to get out of the way. Now let's get to the next character. Okay, I'm just going to say this right now. Rigi is the most flexible support character in the entire game. Not only she can use her special abilities much faster than every other character, and I know that in, even at the start of the, her release, her ability used to be two seconds of healing. She used to heal and give armor to a target every two seconds. Now, thanks to that little nerf, that still doesn't change the fact of how annoying she can be. She's still flexible. She can. She's still the queen of stun mechanics, and people who main her know this exceptionally well. They use the stun. They use the puff and sting motive. You know, the one when you just bash someone and then you actually just knock them out with a single alt attack, and then yeah, see, it just kills them immediately. Kills most classes, hurts most classes, and sure as hell annoys all classes. If you ever see a Brigitte main, let, give me a call. I'll come along as Junkrat and I'll completely destroy her. Because trust me, if there's anything that kills a Brigitte faster, it's explosives, not regular bullets. Oh boy. You know what? I am not going to lie. I love Lucio as probably just from his personality alone. And hell, have you even heard his music when you play with the skin? It's amazing. I'll just shut up for it and then you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I guess you probably didn't hear it, but if you know what the jazz skin actually does, it plays jazz music instead of, you know, pop, pop cultural music. And I thought that's pretty cool. But in most cases, Lucio mains love pushing people into clips. Just they love putting people into instant death areas more than Roadhog mains at any circumstances. But I must also say they are probably one of the most mobile classes in the game. I, if I, and the difference between mobile and flexible is flexible being able to d deliver the most pain and assistance in a single go, while mobile gives him the more ability to of not get shot. Soldier 76 is being second, but Lucio takes first place and being able to wall jump jump even further, and not to mention go faster after jumping from said wall, and also healing everybody in a quick manner. And Lucio mains are probably one of the most obvious choices in competitive play, and they also seem to be extremely overused in specific maps that involve pits. And my recommendation to you is, if you love going extremely fast and you love healing your teammates and it's such a rapid rate and delivering damage all at the same time, while actually being able to push people off and being able to help as many people as possible with both speed and actual healing, like I said earlier, play as Lucio. I can guarantee you, you'll love playing as him. Also, his pretty jazzy music are probably one of the best parts of the entire game. Not gonna lie. Straight down, hands up. You are going to love Lucio, and I know for a fact all mains do. You're just gonna have to figure out that for yourself. Mercy mains are the most common actual support characters in the entire game. However, in my experience, they only exist because they want to help Farah and no one else. Sure, there are a few friends of mine who play as Mercy and they help everyone, which I'm going to say straight up is a godsend. But however, I can't play as Mercy solely because I just can't do the whole press triggers and help people and float. I definitely don't want to do the combination of helping Farah, not because it's uncomfortable for my holding the controller, but it's because it's a complete waste of my time and Farah should burn in hell. But I actually really cannot help other people as Mercy. I would rather play as Lucio, but those mains who play Mercy 
Well, there's two different types. The first type is the ones that actually help other people, and they actually give damage boosts to the right other people, and they actually do a good job. I've already mentioned the Pharaoh Mercy combo, so that doesn't need explaining, but what I will explain is the Battle Mercy combo, where she will use her ultimate deliberately just to use her infinite ammo upgrade in her pistol. And quite honestly, not only do I think it's completely douchebaggerous, but why would you use a pistol that is completely situational just to kill other people? Well, it's probably because it's got the probably the most average damage, but a good fire rate to make it extremely dangerous. But yeah, I'm still not going to play Mercy, no matter how much you ask me. Sorry. Alright, so the crazy witch lady. I really, really don't like this character. Mostly because her Dragon Ball Z-like attacks are extremely annoying, somewhat ranged. I'm not even joking, you could probably be standing on a ledge and she'll still get you, while behind some sort of random shield. I don't know how it works, but she will always get you. And that's what these mains are. They will get you, no matter what. It's scary as hell to think about, and I'd rather what, not think about it any further than what I have to. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, as well as like I said with every other character, I hate Symmetra. Not just because of how she plays, she is the most sour personality character I have ever seen in my life. She is such an absolute bitch. And sure, yes, I can easily say this, she pretty much represents the entire Overwatch community in a nutshell. Sour, expects the best out of people, thinks she's top bitch, and, and thinks everyone is her little pawns. Me, honestly, I think that's just plain stupid. Also, her turrets have the lowest health I've ever seen. I mean, sure, yes, it's going to be great that she's going to be changed from defense and have much better power, but she seriously needs to give her turrets a boost. I could easily sneeze on her turrets and it would have the same effect. They would just break easily and there would be nothing good coming out of it. But as for Symmetra remains, they are only there to distract you. Nothing else and nothing more. Which is pretty much said for any other character I might have mentioned with that exact detail. And with that being said, I'm going to just say this. If you are really good at playing Symmetra, and you are just so good that no one can easily defy you, that's great. Just don't act like Symmetra, okay? It will just ruin everyone's day and no one will like you at the end run. Trust me. I'm only going to say this once before I get into the main battle. I'm only going to explain this as clearly as I can. I think, without a doubt, Zenyatta is one of the most dangerous DPS supports in the entire game. Yes, even more dangerous than Brigitte. Brigitte at least has some sort of form, you know, to actually annoy people. And she's fast, she's annoying. But if she had a Zen on her side, it would be done much faster. And, quite honestly, if you prove me wrong, then I would like to see you try and defeat a Zenyatta main, who is currently giving you the ability to eat more pain while already hurt, which I'm pretty sure no one likes, and it would also give Junkrat and, not to mention any flying or mobile character, a run for their money, and, not to mention, it would also bring Bastion back down to his knees from turret form to taking half the damage to actually taking the same amount of damage you would normally take. I know a lot of people think, oh yeah, Zen's only there for heals, and yeah, that's probably it. But in most seriousness though, are you really going to only play Zen just to heal people? Or are you just going to give people double the pain while throwing balls that probably aren't supposed to hurt, but they managed to actually do that perfectively and actually do more headshot damage than McCree on a bad day, then I don't know. But Zenyatta mains are extremely dangerous to go up against. 
and the moment they get their ultimate, they're going to save their pals from a cruel fate. Whether you like it or not, Zenyatta is going to make your life worse than any character combined. I didn't mention Zenyatta in my last video, solely because I'm pretty sure doing a Discord on a whole bunch of robots wasn't exactly going to do me any good. And not to mention, have you seen how much damage Zen can do with a Discord and a headshot? A lot. And I don't like that. I mean, sure it's fun to dish it out to every poor bastard that comes near my way. But when was the last time you died from a Zen because he got this because you got discorded and you had nothing else to do. You got cornered, the whole team's after you, and you've got a discord testicle on the side of your head. Yeah, not very good. And I can definitely say this without fail, that Zenyato will not give you tranquility before the match is over. And that, my dear boy, and girls, depending on who's watching this video, I can assure you, there's no more dangerous support in any game in history than the Zenyatta who can discord the entire team without fail. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you didn't because, you know, you're extremely salty and you thought that something I said was extremely harmful, well, I guess you didn't read the beginning of the video, did you? But yeah, I was given a lot of motivation from a few people, so I would just put up their names right now, and I would thank them so much for that encouragement, just so I could finally get this video out of the bag and straight onto the internet. And who knows, maybe if I, maybe if I can, I'll probably put up a stereotype for each and every single actual ultimate that the characters use, and how I think it affects the game. Anyway, I hope you would... Well, actually, I've already said that. Maybe you should like and share this with your friends. Don't forget to see it on YouTube. Subscribe if you want to. This is Killing Dead 6, and I'll see you guys next time.